Welcome everyone, Christine here on Serious Gaming with my playthrough of Tyranny on Path of the Dam difficulty expert mode. I find the background of this game extremely interesting, just the setting of it. For over 400 years, the armies of Kairos the Overlord have swept across the known world. All who stood against them fell before their might. Even the Archons, women and men of immense power, were forced to kneel, chained to the Overlord's will. Now Kairos' final conquest has come to our corner of the world, and two of the Overlord's armies compete for the honor of taking our lands. The elite disfavored, and the teeming horde of the Scarlet Chorus. The voices of Narad, spymaster and archon of secrets, guides the fierce and undisciplined masses of the Scarlet Chorus. With each battle, the Scarlet Chorus grows stronger as the defeated are given a simple choice. Serve or die. Grave and Ash, archon of war and the Overlord's most loyal general, leads the disfavored. Though small in number, Kairos' ironclad legion has never met true defeat in open battle. Watching over the two generals is Tunan, the Adjudicator, Archon of Justice, eldest of Kairos' minions. Tunan brings Kairos' laws to newly conquered lands, aided by the Fatebinders, judges and executioners of the Overlord's laws. You were among the youngest of the court of Fatebinders when Kairos' armies came to our lands. How could we have known that the fate of thousands would rest in your hands? A lot more than just a couple of thousands. But still, it's a very interesting set. Alright, uh... See, I think, uh... Alright, this is all random, like you can get the woman, you can get the man, it's a random chance. I'm gonna go with this one. Uh, not quite that. Okay, I think... Uh, yeah, that works. Just uh, change. Gonna go as a noble scion, and then, you know, you spent the... Uh, uh, your youth on letters, history, rhetoric, and other matters of culture. <laughs> that appeals to me. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna go with the greatsword. Alright, with uh, Sunder as my main. And then Spear and Shield as the secondary. Okay, uh, colors. It's gonna be very simple. Actually, I'll put that. Wait, that should do it. White, white. Uh, name Boromir, okay, yeah. Gondor will rise again. Make Gondor great again. <laughs> Truly, make Gondor great again. That was Boromir's pet land. Like, I'll admit I vastly prefer Boromir as a character in Lord of the Rings than fucking Aragorn. Aragorn just, uh... Seem to me more like an entitled prick, especially in in kind of like the books. In you know in the movies he's just an incompetent fool who ends up having power without really wanting it. Uh, I'm gonna go with some subterfuge. I feel would probably be good. Some lore and a bit of uh, dodge. Anyway, uh, let's go conquest. All the world has fallen to Kairos, and now the Overlord's eye is on the Tears, our home, the last corner of the world free of Kairos' reign. Two armies, the Disfavored and the Scarlet Chorus, march south from the Northern Empire the last realm to fall to Kairos a century prior. In the early days of 428, 
Kairos' armies arrive at the Gates of Judgment, the mountainous border that we Tearsmen so long believed unassailable. Unable to agree on a unified plan of defense, the various leaders of the Tears sit and wait for each other to deal with the Conquerors. Until it's too late. Yeah. Decisions. Your decisions matter. Choose wisely. 428TR. You're one of Kairos' conquest. Alright. The Bastard City. Uh, natural Harbor. It's the center of all wealth. <laughs> it was little more than a backwater trading post. All right. You're basically fighting for a dictatorship. Anyway, gates of Judgment, so you can fight in battle if you so desire. But let's be smart. Let's infiltrate the city. And I'm gonna go with... Well, I guess the Scarlet Chorus. You know, when I think of the disfavored in the Scarlet Chorus, I think a lot about the Mongol army, because the Mongol army also, under Genghis Khan, kind of had something similar. Like, they had an elite force, small elite force, and then they had a, ver a fairly, maybe not larger, but they did have a substantial force of of people that they forced into service, uh, which, and, and which were also the front line. So, join the Scarlet Chorus as they raid small town, uh, villages and small towns, conscripting... Okay. Yeah. Okay, uh, inside the agent or containing the fire. No, I'm gonna deal with uh, infiltrating. Connected smuggler. All right. Now there's a uh, something reminding me of Black Company, and the lady in all of this. For anyone that's read that. Okay. So I'm gonna send the Scarlet Chorus because apparently they're good spies. A duel. Uh, let's go for the duel. And so it falls. With minimal bloodshed. A strategic war asset. Well, I think that's... Uh... Yeah, I'll leave some other people to take over the mountains. Uh, let's go for the crossing. 429. Bring order, that's the key point. Iron must flow, the cult of Siren. Local tribe of beastmen? Hmm. No, it's not a good idea. 
I think I'm gonna go with the disfavored. You need a balanced view and you need to keep your secrets. It's a very important military strategy. So disfavored. Actually, I've much favored the disfavored over the Scarlet Chorus and all of this. They just seem like a bunch of thugs. Spies, sure, effective ones, but eh, not the kind of people you want to favor in an army. They're expendable. So I'm gonna go with the disfavored. Both armies demanded preferential treatment. Okay. Guardians do. Sell swords. No. I think this is more important. So, you can accept a bribe for, um. No, I'm not gonna take a bribe. In fact, there's nothing more I find than sufferable than taking bribes that actually don't benefit anyone. <laughs> Except, obviously, the person taking the bribe, so... Not gonna do it. Um, actually, this is how I'm gonna play the game. I'm gonna have try and have a fair and balanced view of all things. Coming from... Uh, as someone who lives in a country where there's a very high level of corruption, there's nothing more infuriating <laughs> than basically uh, accepting it that... So, logged in the view of their armies, letting pain and humiliation teach them where reason had failed. All right. Okay, that's a no-brainer disfavored because the Scarlet Chorus, although they're useful as spies, they're an anarchist fo uh, force, so I'm gonna go with the disfavored. I'm gonna go for Azure. The richest settlement of Tears sat on a verdant, fertile plain. As the uh, disfavored clashed with the Azure's defenders, the Scarlet Corals contended against the region's tribal beastmen, who protected their ancestral lands with incredible fury. <laughs> Sending the Scarlet Chorus after them seems like a good idea, uh, because they're spies, ultimately, plays to their strength.
Yeah, I think sending both armies is the right course of action. Yeah. All right. So conquest is completed. The year is 431, and Kairos's invasion has shattered all major opposition in the tears. The younger realms the Bastard Tier, the Free Cities. All who defied Kairos lay broken by battle, or bowed in surrender. The two armies of the Overlord, the Disfavored and the Scarlet Chorus, now control our lands. But our will is not yet extinguished, not entirely. In the Valley of Vendrian's Well, those of us unwilling to bow to Kairos have banded together in defiance. Violating an oath of surrender from two years prior, we have staged a bloody uprising, murdering the disfavored and Scarlet Chorus garrison in a midnight assault. With their main forces spread across the tiers, the disfavored and Scarlet Chorus redeploy to Vendrian's Well to crush the resistance, but months pass with no definitive battle. As disagreement and discord paralyze the Archons, we bide our time and wait for our message of insurrection to spread across the tiers. The Overlord is not amused, and Kairos has one message for the Archons. Crush the Oathbreakers or die. Kairos backs this threat with an edict, a magical commandment that can slay all in the valley should the order be ignored. The honor of proclaiming this edict fell to you. Sent across the mountains to Vendrian's Well, you carry the Overlord's edict to read before the Archons. As you finally make your way through the winding mountain passes into the valley, the ground trembles, and Kairos's magic seals the way behind you. You are trapped in Vendrian's Well, with Kairos's armies and the Oathbreakers. The only way to survive is to fulfill the terms of the Overlord's Edict, in any way that you can. All right. The Overlord has sealed the valley. Our soldiers will complete their task or die. Your first instinct is to blame the Scarlet Horrors.
Okay, I should probably switch the voice around actually. Sorry, can't. Can't do that. I got it. Can't do that. Right. Just a couple of abilities. Probably you. won't like the combat of this, but then again, I don't like uh, this style of combat anyway. I just find the sending the story ideas behind this game very interesting, just like from the very beginning of all of it. Worm. Harbinger, still standing after three years of war. Come join me in battle once again. We'll show these children how it's done. Why not? Got it. Kind of slow, isn't it? But they're dying. Okay. That's what matters. I'll tear your skeleton out by your ass. Whew. I can tell you didn't spend the conquest in a diplomat's tent. I'm Verse, by the way, but there are more important things to take care of than introductions. Those Vendrian guard we killed didn't come alone. Why are the Vendrian guard attacking now? <sighs> My guess? The Vendrian guard are testing our strength in battle, learning how we perform before they organize a real offensive. That or they're really, really desperate to get beyond the mountains and couldn't wait until nightfall. A Scarlet Fury, one of the elite killers of our ignoble gang. You'll see more than a few of us around camp, but don't let that fool you. We're a rare breed. Most of the soldiers in the Scarlet Chorus are little more than farmers and children armed with rusted forks. Makes them easier to control. The voices of Narat called his best fighters to this siege. There must be something important about Vendrian's well, though don't ask me what. 
The Archon isn't in the habit of spilling secrets. The voices of Narat told me to intercept you at Edgering Ruins before you busied yourself solving all of the camp's problems. <sighs> Guess I was too late. You're due for a meeting with the Archons, but we should handle the small matter of this ambush first. Eager. <laughs> I like that. Before we go, you might search among the remains of our fallen comrades. Wherever they're bound, I doubt they'll miss their boots, much less any rings or any useful iron they might be clutching. Nice and practical. No reason to pity the fallen. Before long, we might wish we'd joined them here. But at least we'll enjoy heavy pockets and warm toes. For the voices of Narat! All right, let's go. Hmm. I implore you end this foolishness and lay down your arms. They have the commander. Okay. Right. Seems this would work.
Well, that training, Graven Ash doesn't teach you to read. Nah, that's insulting. Examine it. Yes. I suppose... Yeah, I gave them a chance to surrender, ultimately. I 
I did. Remember. Will do. He's literally the same guy I gave a surrender to. And he spat in my face. It seems in order. Sorry, can't. Will do. Sorry, can't. Alright, Christine Senya, don't forget to subscribe and like the video. Welcome to Tyranny.